Hey, and welcome back to part 5 of our industrial craft tutorial. This is part B. And uh, this is my little testing rig for uh, factory crafts um, automated gatherer with uh, conveyor belts. Little redstone hook up there. Just trying things out, see if I'll use it in the future or not. But uh, that's not what we're here for. We're here to find out how to set up automated miners, wire them properly, and have things go smoothly. So the first thing we're going to need, of course, are the miners, the pipes, uh, some wires, MFEs, generators. And by this point, you probably have tons of extra mats sitting around. But one extra thing you're going to need before we go into uh, the field is something called a MC manipulator. Uh, this adjusts the EU current going through a line out of an MFE and is a very invaluable tool for optimizing your machine performance. But before we can make one of those we have to craft the pieces for it. So what you're going to need are advanced circuits. One to be precise but the crafting recipe gives you two. You're going to need a block of lapis two glowstone in either corner, two redstone in either corner, two cable in either corner, and two electric circuits. Then with one of those advanced circuits in hand, you'll need three more redstone, two pieces of cable, and you have your EC manipulator. And we'll get to that here in a moment. So go out here into our test field. We're going to drop a miner and a miner is going to suck up any valuable ore within a two block radius. So what we need to do is space these out so they don't have any overlapping gathering ranges. So one, two, that's as far as that will go. One, two, for the next one, and then we place the second. So there's going to be four spaces in between a pair of miners. And we're going to do this in a series of four. So one, two, three, four, five, place a block, one, two, three, four, five, place a block. And of course we're going to need some chests. Pardon my in-dev here, I forgot the chests. And we're going to place those beside our miners. That way we don't have to stand here and pick up the items as they come flying out the chute. Next up we're going to wire these together. And the easiest way to do this is pick one of the sides and link them together. And then run a second line in between those and drop a block up on top. Now this block on top is where we're going to set our MFE. And to that MFE we are going to attach some generators. Four to be precise. And this is just how I do it. If you feel like you, you're capable enough that you can uh, run high voltage to this from another source or some some other technique, then go right ahead. This is just how I like to do it. And then we're going to begin powering these. So you're going to make sure that fuel, fuel is burning in all four of these at all times. So with this, we're just going to use some regular coal fuel. And then this is going to start powering up the MFE for us. In the meantime, we're going to come over here to the miner. We're going to take our mining pipe and we're going to place mining pipe in the top of each of the miners. Now that's what I wanted to say, but I skipped a step. And this is what we need the EC manipulator for. Each of these miners requires five EU in order to work nonstop. And right now they're getting eight. So we're wasting three EU while these machines are working. So how do we resolve this? Well we take the EC manipulator and we right click the MFE and you notice new output rate is increasing by one per click and eventually it'll cap out at 50 and it can go down as little as one. So we're going to break this block for a moment so it stops wasting energy and we're going to bring this up to an output of 20 now the reason for 20 is because my setup, I have four units that require five energy each. Four times five, we need 20 units. But how does that work? Well, 
20 units comes out of the MFE and through these two lines right here, as noted. Now, going left and right of this block, we'll get 10, and this is called a split, and 10 will be in this block as well, and this one on the other side. And then it's going to split again into two fives. So now we are using 100% of the energy that the MFU is putting out and not wasting any of it. So now we can go ahead and place our mining pipe inside of our automated miners. And if you have the uh, config set up so generators will kick rebatteries out and into a localized chest, then the miners will do the same thing. So as we watch, this is picking up some sandstone, some sand, some more sand. It's got to dig through the desert layer here. So there's not a whole lot just yet. And it did cause a collapse over here. So if you're working on a sa sand area, there might be a cave underneath you. Watch out for it to go tumbling below your feet. And that's basically how you set these up. You just let this run, make sure it's fueled at all times. You'll notice that the energy won't... Um, if you have four generators, such as this hooked up to it, in this configuration, these uh, uh, the MFE will not update its energy at all, because it's taking in 20 EUs and it's outputting 20 EUs right at the same time. So there is no change until one of two things happens. Uh, either the generators burn out, or the miners stop working. And this is the working icon for the miner. It slowly fills up. Now, on this display, current pipe depth 7. That's how many pieces of pipe that this is laid. And lay is actually short for layer, and that's what layer you're currently on. So once it gets, gets down into the maybe 12 or so, you're going to start seeing diamonds and such like that pop up. So here we here we got some iron ore already. Some more iron ore. This one's chugging along pretty good. And what do you want to make sure is you check on this from time to time. And if you're at like 17 pipe depth and something stops, or it's not close to being uh, to where layer is in the single digits, then you may have hit a water or lava patch. In which case, you have two options. One, you can dig down there and clear out around the pipe so it can continue its work. Or two, you can just recall the pipe and move along. Now, we're going to stop this one here and show you how to extract your pipe. And to do that, we're going to backfill. So you go to your chest, you pull out some cobblestone or some useless items, and you just stick them in the top portion of the miner, and it'll do a work through. And instead of gathering stuff around it, it's just going to pick up a piece of mining pipe that it laid and replace it with whatever you put back in the machine. So it's going to make sure that your mining pipe doesn't get used up, because after all this stuff's expensive to make, and we want to make sure that we have enough of it to go around. Uh, with this setup here, I always pull up enough copper and tin to uh, make some bronze wrench wrenches, so I just pick everything up and move it move it over a spot. So I would go in one direction, one, two, three, four, space, and drop the, the next set of miners here and just do this setup all over again. Matter of fact, you can also wire it ahead of time if you want to save yourself some time while this is going on. And that's how you uh, set these up. Um, it's not very difficult, as you can see, and it is very productive. I mean, for the amount of fuel that you put in here, I mean, you could hook this up to a solar cell and it wouldn't do, or you wouldn't have to burn anything, or even solar, or excuse me, wind, or water at the worst possible case, geothermal, nuclear. Just so long as you have the output on this MFE set to 20, or however much you're going to be using. If you only have two, then you would exclude half of this and set this to 10. If you only have one, set it to 5, wire it to 1. Uh, in the case of one, if you're just getting started out, you could go ahead and set everything up like this, sands the uh, miners, and you would just pick that up, wrench it, and drop it back down into the next slot, and it would continue to go. It moves along very quickly. And there you have it. 
we can go back around over here and show you this mod. Uh, this, I'm not sure the name of it, I, I believe it's called Factory Craft. And these are harvesters and conveyors. And what I've done here is I've used a uh, redstone circuit, an RS NOR latch to be precise. And it receives the uh, input here, goes through the diodes to delay the, the signal and to the opposite side of the gate which resets it and turns all of this off. So get some bone mill here and show you this again real quick. I just thought it was a neat thing to have here and once he finishes the fertilizer for his mod uh, I'll be able to do this in a two-step fashion without having to come out here and put bone mill on all these. So get the trees like that and come over here and push my button and it just sucks everything down and it even gives me the the saplings this time around. Whenever I first tried it out uh, he hadn't coated it to give you saplings so I'd have a separate tree farm to, to uh, catch everything. Alright, well, if you have any other questions or concerns about how to set up automatic miners or anything else for industrial craft, please feel free to give me a drop either here on the tube or on the, on the uh, Minecraft forums. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for my next video yet. i got to go through and see what's all left. Uh, but past that, I think maybe my next project is going to be setting up a self-sustaining factory of some sort maybe dealing with um, another mod that automatically moves stuff from chest to machines which I think would be rather cool. So again I'm Halfpick and this has been part 5b of our industrial craft tutorial. Have a great time out there folks. Mine safely. <laughs>